It's only a garden shed. Let's go on. in there. People use this cellar for storage. Nothing that could interest me. Pile of rubbish. It's not here. Tom's photograph. Let's try to get inside. There's no space for this lockpick. News clippings on Lords in the education program. Why are they here? Let's compare this list with the evidence that we found earlier. This is the list of selected participants for October's special education program. According to this poster, John Strobridge is missing. Let's compare them with people from Hearst documents. This man appears in both documents. Hmm. 
All the people in Marsh's document are marked and dated in George Hurst's files. This case must have been full of cartridges. There was something on the stand. There was a rifle here. George Hurst took it with him. A map of Epping Forest. Just rubbish. Here it is. Kate wouldn't like it if I entered her room without her knowledge.
Well, well. Sweet slumber after a hard working day. On my pillow. What can I do for you, Mr. Holmes? Holmes, what are you doing here? What are you planning? A mission of my own. You must play the role of the conscientious doctor while I sneak inside Marsh's house. That's the only way of helping little Tom. The window is firmly shut. There's no space for this lockpick. 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 How can I help you? I came to visit Lord Marsh. What for? I would very much like to see Lord Marsh, if you please. Mr. Holmes? What are you doing here? How can I help you? I came to visit Lord Marsh. What for? I would very much like to see Lord Marsh, if you please. Oh, you're so clumsy. Can you please not... I have to visit Lord Marsh and offer him my services. Fisher, please allow Dr. Watson to enter. Good job, Watson. I can hide here. I can hide here. Let's see how hard to crack this safe is. 
Doctor, it appears that you were impatient to pay me another visit. Indeed. Will you allow me to examine you? A second opinion, so that the great Lord Marge does not become the late Lord Marge. <laughs> well, since you put it that way, very well. Shall I retire to your office, Lord Marsh? No, please, Doctor. I insist that you stay. I shall need your assistance. Will you break anything else? I'll try my best. Mr. Holmes? What are you doing here? Will you break anything else? I'll try my best. November 7th. This means that the meeting is planned for today. Lord Marsh is a keen hunter. Hmm. I'd suggest that your current weakness is perhaps more than a simple case of influenza, Lord Marsh. <coughs> Where might your companion be, Dr. Watson? Oh, he's busy poking his nose into other people's business, I'm sure. <clears throat> My lord, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I must remind you about your meeting. Is it already time? My apologies, Dr. Watson, but we are expected elsewhere. Might we offer you a lift? You are going out. I'm not sure that's wise in your condition. I value your opinion, but misery never rests and I am needed. Well, do please take good care of yourself, Lord Marsh. I'll send you my diagnosis, Dr. Fisher. Thank you, Dr. Watson. Farewell.
Holmes, come here. This is serious. Watson, what are you doing at my table? I just need to check one thing about Lord Marsh. My intuition tells me that Lord Marsh is hiding something about his disease. His cough, in addition to his fever and his usage of strong painkillers, leads me to believe that he is seriously ill. Let's study it more closely. Sputum with tiny drops of blood. Hmm. I could take a sample and examine it under the microscope. Let us apply chemicals to color the sample. I need a pipette. This chemical should be applied third. Now, let's examine the colored sample under the microscope. Bacterium. It appears that Lord Marsh is seriously ill. Holmes, this is no longer a laughing matter. It is just as I feared Lord Marsh is suffering from tuberculosis. You don't say. Yes, I do say. And Holmes, he will die if he is not transferred to a sanatorium as soon as possible. And yet both Lord Marsh and Dr. Fisher are doing their best to hide this fact. How interesting. But why? Why indeed, Watson. Oh, but... Dear God, you don't think that Lord Marsh contracted tuberculosis while aiding the poor? How terrible. I have a commitment that I can't possibly cancel. Holmes, during my absence, please be extremely careful. This disease is highly contagious. And remember that we have women at home. Thank you, Miss Alice. Until later. I'll see you soon, Caitlin. Where have you been? Our neighbor lent me a book. She is so kind. I think she likes you. <laughs> I doubt that. How is your investigation going? It's going. Dracula? Yes. It's forbidden reading at my boarding school. Did you know? Well, well. It's not the one I need.
it is. Cranston's Oak is in Epping Forest. That's the place indicated on George Hurst's map. Well, well. It is thrilling. Please, sir, find my father. Whitechapel High Street. No gods, no masters. I won't disturb Child Lord Marsh without a reason. Sent your kids to school instead of the coal mine. Let's try to find the place from the hand-drawn map.
Here it is. Drat. I'll need to hurry if I want to find out what's going on at the forest. Father, that boy Wiggins, does he come here very often? He helps occasionally in some of my cases. Why do you ask? I'd like to talk to him. Talk to him? Father, back at school there are only girls to talk to, and they are so boring. I'm sure Wiggins has lots of exciting stories to tell about his life in London. It would be so romantic. Kate, Wiggins is not the sort of boy you should be socializing with. So he's perfect then. Oh, Kate. I'll leave you alone now. Let's see how long you can stay alive! <laughs> Let's see how long you can stay alive! <laughs>
see how long you can stay alive. Your blood in the snow. <laughs> Where have you gone? <laughs> Is that your? Let's see how long you can stay alive! Is he? he was poor. This man was killed recently. The body is still warm. Find him, boys! Find him! 
You won't get far! He was killed by a shot to the forehead. My 
God, it's Lord Harrington's body. My health is deteriorating. I need to dress my wound. The Quartermain Club. This must be Lord Marsh's cabin. This will help to dress my wound. Someone's coming, I better hide. It's almost over. Who are you? George Erst from the First Lovett Scouts, here to deliver justice. <laughs> An old soldier. How ironic. Did we refuse you on our special education program? It's true, I was refused. An old wounded soldier is useless to you. But he can still be dangerous. We hunted a lot in these woods, but I didn't expect to become the prey. I have lived a grand life without any limits set by others. I will die a happy man, so you won't see me begging, you festering wretch. <laughs> I should decide what to do before leaving the cupboard. George, lower your rifle, please, for Tom's sake. Holmes! My, my. An almost worthy opponent. Tom? My Tom? If you've endangered my lad in any way, you will pay dearly. I assure you that Tom is safe in London with a well-trusted friend. And now it's time to end this. By all means. George, listen to me. If you're seeking an apt punishment and vengeance, killing Marsh will give him exactly what he wants. He would die knowing that he had fulfilled his life through his absolute control of it. But if you allow Marsh to live and be arrested, he will suffer a punishment far greater than your eye could deliver. His ball and chain will be the debilitating tuberculosis. It will drag him painfully and slowly to his demise behind bars. You're mad! You're both mad! Let's go and find Tom. Not just yet. See, Lord Marsh, you will die here. Although not by the gun, you'll die slowly. Don't do this, George. Detective, take a look here. This is how you became sick, Lord Marsh. The beheading of your victims who were suffering from tuberculosis was what infected you. Poetic justice. Holmes, you cannot fully understand why we helped so many and sacrificed a few. But don't let me die like this. Just kill me now. Mr. Hurst, you've already served brutal justice to Lord Harrington and I hope Lord Collins and Dr. Fisher. Taking that into consideration, you may as well kill Lord Marsh and end the Quartermain Club completely. No loose ends.
Yes! Well done, Watson! Holmes, you're playing bowls? Indoors? Not just any old bowls, Watson. Lawn bowling. Seriously? With your injury? Oh, no. Mrs. Hudson is going to murder you. Hmm. Well, that's it for now. Time to go. Would you care to join me? You're incorrigible. And where are we going, Holmes? I'm participating in the final stage of the annual tournament held by the London Archaeological Institute's Bowling Club. It's an official invitation. I'll just need to dress suitably and then we can leave. This suit isn't appropriate for where we're going. My bag with lawn bowls for the upcoming tournament. Who chased his own tail again? I should walk with you more often. Holmes, aren't you really sure you want to wear that? This? Everyone dresses like this at the club. <laughs> that should be a sight worth seeing. I only hope our charming neighbor won't spot you like that. Mr. Holmes, you played very well yesterday. I'm obliged to you, Sir Charles. I play many outdoor sports. That's the key to my success. My friend Dr. Watson has decided to join me. Really? Mr. Holmes, would you like to see the first prize? A rare stone Mayan Kiche calendar. Mayan Kiche? Indeed. Their legendary king, Tekun Uman, has his statue just behind you. Although this one is a cast metal copy. That? Oh. Well, since only members may enter the clubhouse, we have exhibited the calendar outside. Please, explore. The statue of Takun Uman. This statue is made of metal. Good luck, Holmes.
I'd like to win the Mayan calendar. It's a beautiful work of art. Mr. Holmes, I'm glad you are my opponent for the final. People call me Arthur the Invincible. <laughs> so I wish you good luck. Ah, Mr. Holmes, are you ready to begin the final game? Yes, let's start the final.
Congratulations on your game, Mr. Holmes. Exceptional. The award ceremony will be tomorrow morning. See you then to receive your prize of the calendar. I trust you will be there as well, Dr. Watson? Unfortunately, I'll be unable to attend tomorrow. Duty calls. Ah, what a pity. Let's go home. These little sandwiches are delicious. The first prize, the Mayan Kiche calendar. I was knocked out of the semi-finals. I couldn't believe it. My congratulations, Mr. Holmes. Only club members have access. Hello, Mr. Bouvier. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Holmes. Well, Caitlin? <laughs> Your costume! <laughs> oh, don't you like it? Oh, I do! <laughs> Caitlin, come on. Show some respect for your father. You know, Father, Miss Alice was telling me all about her travels. She has already toured the world with her own father. Your daughter is exquisite. And just to think that she was aboard the Orient Express when it was attacked. <gasps> what a dream. Indeed. She's so creative and imaginative. And that reminds me, would you allow Caitlin to visit me so that she can practice playing the piano? Very kind of you, but I decided that Caitlin should stop playing the piano. Oh, Father! Why did you say that? Caitlin, we are neighbors. We'll meet again. Until then, I shall leave you with this book. Thank you, Miss Alice.
Here it is. did it. It killed Zacharias. Calm yourself now, Sir Charles. You've had a shock. Let the police do their duty. What can a mere inspector like you do about it? You don't know anything. A mere inspector? Phew. And now here comes Mr. Holmes. Lestrade, are you here to receive a prize as well? <laughs> Very amusing, Holmes. You can go home. The ceremony's been cancelled. We've got a murder scene here. Really? And to think I only came here for my prize. I know, Holmes. I saw your name on the list of finalists. So go away. You're not going to congratulate me. What? Do you really think I'm that naive? You turning up out of the blue and then bam, a murder? There's a surprise. Oh, you're making a spectacle of yourself, Lestrade. Let's just pretend that I'm a simple uh, consultant, your humble assistant. Oh, all right then. A club member, Mr. Zacharias Greystoke, was killed at around four in the morning. There. Now, don't mess around. I promise that I won't, Inspector. What do you make of the facts? It's quite clear. The murderer intended to steal the Mayan calendar. He was caught by Zacharias Greystoke. He then took up the first weapon that came to hand, the statue's spear, and killed Greystoke. Then he fled, just as Sir Charles was coming out of the club. Unfortunately, we've been unable to find any trail beyond the club's wall. It's as if the murderer vanished into thin air. Well, take a look for yourself. Did you search the clubhouse? What for? The murder took place outside. Pieces from the pedestal. A piece of the statue's mounting rod. Traces of metal on stone. This spear came from the statue on the pedestal. The case is scratched and dented. Tissot watch, Swiss, 1855. This watch is valuable and old. It's been through a great deal. Dry leaves. They make a noise. Zacharias probably walked across them. Money was left inside the wallet.
These drawings represent the Mayan symbols. All valuables were left on the victim. The strike was powerful and well aimed. Sir Charles, are you able to tell me in detail what happened? Ah, Mr. Holmes. Well, to prepare for the awards ceremony, I decided to spend the night here at the club. I was sitting alone at my desk when I suddenly heard a loud, metallic sound and a terrible shout. I hurried outside and... and... Well, I found the body of Zacharias. And I swear it. I saw the statue of Tekun Uman running away. You saw the statue running. It, it was dark, but yes, I'm sure of it. It was running, and it was making the most horrible metal sound as it did so. And can't you see? The pedestal is now empty. Did you know the victim? Yes, of course. It was Zacharias Greystoke. He is, was, a club member, and an excellent bowler. But why was he here so early in the morning? Oh, I don't know. Sir Charles, where did the Mayan calendar come from? It was donated anonymously. We received it shortly before the tournament, with a letter asking that it be awarded to the winner. Is the calendar valuable? Uh, not really. It has historical value, of course. But to be truthful with you, Mr. Holmes, it isn't worth very much. May I go in the clubhouse? It's members only. I cannot authorize anyone unless that person has a written warrant from the police. Only club members have access. broken branch. Somebody jumped into the tree and then over the wall. Scratches on the stone. You're still here. At your service, Mr. Holmes. If I believed Lestrade, this Mayan calendar was the reason behind the murder. Can I help you, Mr. Holmes? Murder at my club. What a dis.
At your service, Mr. Holmes. What did the police say? Do you know anything? I need to finish here first. A murder. What a spectacular season. The great tournament of the London Archaeological Institute's bowling club. mounting rod is broken. Traces of metal on stone. The surface is damaged. It looks like the statue broke away from its pedestal. And what about the statue? I've no idea yet. I imagine a thief must have taken it somehow. Hmm. Right. So there were thieves, and they were very well equipped? Yes, must have been. But then there's also Sir Charles's version, but, uh... Please, go on. <laughs> he said this morning that he was alone at his desk when he heard a shout. He went outside and saw Greystoke lying on the ground, and... Believe it or not, he said that there was no one else on the green that night but the statue itself running away. <laughs> you mean that the statue might have killed the victim? Interesting. Absurd, more like. Besides, it was dark and foggy. So, somewhat like your version, then. No, it wasn't like that.
No, it wasn't like that. It looks as if Zacharias was killed the moment he approached the calendar and killed by the spear from Takunuman's statue that jumped from its stand and escaped over the wall. Well, Holmes, your conclusions as my consultant? My conclusions are approximate to Sir Charles's testimony. <laughs> oh dear, you think the statue did it? Everything points to the fact that the spear was thrown from the pedestal, and Mr. Greystoke appeared not to notice the killer. <laughs> Indeed. The journalists will be ecstatic about your version. <laughs> I would like to examine the victim and take a look at his belongings. Oh, you've amused me at least, Mr. Holmes. Very well. I'll grant you authorization for the examination at Scotland Yard, but nothing more.